So my name is Kelly and I am a certified athletic trainer for St. Mary's Orthopedics and I'm going to be here today to explain how to use crutches. So the first thing you want to do, crutches come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. They're not all adjustable to every person's height. They're also, some of them come in wood, some of them are in metal. So if you have any questions, bring them into your provider. Now the first thing you want to do is that you want to make sure they're properly sized. So they want to be about three to four fingers below your armpit and then you want to have about a 30 degree bend in your elbow. Now if they need to be adjusted on the aluminum ones it's really nice there's a little push pin on the metal ones it's a little bit more complicated but there's a screw. So don't always assume that even though you're 5'4", five, 5'3", five, that that's going to be the appropriate height. So when you're in your walking phase for this demo I'm going to pretend that my right leg is my injured or operative leg and I'm going to use the Lipizzan stallion technique. So I want to flex at the hip, flex at the knee, my crutch is going to go forward and bisect my foot. All my weight is going to be taken on my hands but my heel is going to touch down and make contact with the ground as I step forward with my good leg. So it's flex at the hip, flex at the knee, heel down, crutches bisect, all my weight's on my hands and then I'm going to step through with my good leg. So flex at the hip, flex at the knee, heel down, crutches bisect, weight on my hands and step through. Now if you're going up and down stairs, my first suggestion is to try to plan ahead before surgery and to make it so that you don't have to go up a flight of stairs to go to the bathroom to get to your bedroom multiple times a day. Now the saying as it goes is up with the good and down with the bad. So again my right leg is my operative leg. I'm going to go up with my left leg first and then go up with my bad leg. And this is, I'm going to use two crutches if I don't have the option of using a railing. So again it's up with the good leg and then up with the bad leg. Now on the way down I want to go down with my bad leg first so that means my crutches are going down. I'm going to step down with my bad leg. All my weight is still on my hands and then I can step through. So to repeat that one one more time, it's down with my bad so my crutches go down, all my weights on my hands and then my good leg comes down. Now if you have a railing, I'm going to suggest you have someone hold a crutch. It gets a little bulky if you're trying to get up the stairs with two. I would prefer the railing to be on the same side as your operative leg and you have your crutch still for support. So you're going to do the same process. I'm going up with my good leg and then coming up with my bad. So to repeat that, up with the good and then up with the bad. On the way down, it's going to be the same process. I'm going down with my bad leg and then collecting with my good. To repeat one more time, down with the bad and then down with the good. Now as you progress off crutches, what they're going to say is when it starts to get too much, you're going to put more weight on your foot as you go. So continuing your flex of your hip, flex of your knee, and you're going to put more weight on it. When it starts to get to the point where your crutches are in the way, because I was operated on my right leg, I'm going to get rid of my right crutch. Now it's going to be the same process. I'm going to flex the hip, flex the knee, heel down. My crutch is still going forward with that foot and I'm going to step through. And as I get better, typically over three to five days and get stronger, as I get to the point where this foot doesn't need it anymore, I'm going to get rid of the other crutch. The next part is just trying to walk normally. There are three things that we like to focus on when we're walking. The stance phase, the stride length, and a name called the wobble factor. You can make up your own name for it. So stride length, you want the distance that you take up on each step to be the same distance. So if my right leg is the operative leg, I want to make sure that I step about the same distance with each leg. We don't want it looking really short with my right leg with a quick step. The stance phase is I want to spend the same amount of time on one leg as I do the other. So I, the same thing, I don't want that, look my stride length is the same, but I'm still doing a really quick step. And then the last one is the wobble factor, is when you're leaning to avoid putting all your weight on that leg. So I'm like way over here and even though my stance phase and my stride length are the same, the wobble factor isn't. So really make sure that you're walking correctly and when you get to that point, if you find that any of those steps aren't working, head back to the crutches and see if you can relearn how to walk. 
The next thing we're going to talk about is if your surgeon told you to be completely non-weight bearing and to keep your leg up, then again, crutch setting, make sure it's three to four fingers below and that your arms are at about a 30 degree bend. And we're going to pretend that my right leg is my injured or operative leg. Now the crutches are going to be my balance. So I'm going to go ahead and bend my right leg up. I'm going to go forward, pretending that's my bad leg, and then swing through to my good leg. All my weight is transferred through my arms or through my hands so that the pressure's not in your armpit. So again, it's crutches forward and then swing through. So all the way back at the beginning, you're on your operative leg, you can balance here. And then you're going to crutch forward, swing through, crutch forward, swing through.